Hello everyone, that's your day second video, doing guys on this Sunday roundup for day second video, so it can be your eclectic Sunday afternoon look at this and that. We're going to be uh, dealing with solar activity, sea surface temperature anomalies, uh, ENSO, Arctic Constellation, uh, North Atlantic Constellation, and the weather for the next week, 10 days and beyond as well. So I hope you find it interesting and informative. The Gals Office summer 2019 forecast has been released. That video is here on the homepage. You have a look at when you're done with this video. And uh, later on, that video will be placed on the summer forecast page with a written uh, summary going over uh, everything that we uh, everything that we're forecasting. Uh, for this summer. That'll be sometime this evening. We'll also have a little sneak peek at the autumn uh, later on this afternoon as the long range bandwagon now rolls on to the next season at Gaza. As we never stop as soon as we release uh, one seasonal forecast, we're thinking about the next season. Uh, so, um, Autumn sneak peek will be on the way later on this afternoon. Right, let's get on with Sunday Roundup. And we're going to start off with solar activity. So this is the uh, solar disk on our side of the disk today from solarham.net. And we have a spotless uh, solar disk. No sunspots uh, visible on our side of the disk. Uh, today, this is the Gazovis Sunday Roundup Activity Tracker sent through by our good friend James Ackrill. In fact, James sent him this through, and uh, this is depicting um, solar activity going right way back to uh, last summer. Actually, going back to there. And it tells us that uh, we are at very low levels with solar activities. We know we're heading into or we're at solar uh, minimum. And uh, we can see that uh, we actually had a few days of spotlessness. Uh, now, by the way, I should have said that uh, Soham is forecasting that uh, solar, activity, solar activity will remain at very low levels for the next uh, three days. So um, we're having a bit of a run of uh, spotlessness. At the moment, you see from the orange line, it's down on the floor of the chart, telling us had a few days of no uh, sunspots. And uh, this is expected to continue through the next few days uh, as well. So... Um, we had a little bit of an increase in solar activity uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, started getting some uh, very minimal level of sunspots. But we did get some sunspots uh, a couple of weeks ago. But you see, that really has trended downwards over the past few days. The uh, thick green and thick red lines, which are the trend lines, uh, aren't yet trending downwards. But uh, if this run of uh, no sunspots continues uh, for the next few days... Men, I'd expect to see those trend lines very quickly starting to uh, move downwards. They may well reach the floor of the chart, actually, in the uh, next few days, if we was to keep this run of spotlessness going, such as we had uh, for a couple of days, anyway, a few days back at the uh, at the uh, start of March. So, um, at very low levels of solar activity, we're around solar minimum. We're not sure when solar minimum is going to occur. It will probably happen sometime in the next sort of six to nine months, either this year or sometime early next year. But uh, we're not at all far away from true solar minimum, solar minimum and the beginning of solar cycle uh, 25. And the reason that we look at solar activity, of course, is that when we're at low levels of solar activity, there is a connection between that and an increased risk of northern blocking, and particularly so in the winter. Northern blocking is the route getting cold out, out of the pole and into mid latitude so it's not a guarantee of anything um but uh, it does sort of load the dice a little bit in favor of colder winters when you're at or actually just after uh solar minimum we shall keep an eye on the gas whether it's solar uh, tracker over the next few days and weeks uh this is how things are looking in terms of eurasian snow cover so continuing to uh, thaw out across uh, Siberia, we can see that we still have snow cover across the northern parts of Siberia going up towards the Arctic Circle. But very quickly now, this is thawing out. It won't be too long at all before that is completely snow free away from uh, mountainous areas. You can see that the uh, melt season, the Arctic uh, melt season has begun now. So uh, we're beginning to lose Arctic sea ice from, uh, from there and also beginning to lose it from around here and also to the south of greens as well that's all typical uh, you always uh, get a get a melt season in the arctic in uh, in the summer it'll reach its depths this melt season around early september and uh, we'll see how um how much of a melt season we get 
uh, this year. We'll be keeping an eye on that, of course. Uh, this is how things are looking with the oceans when we did last week's gas with his Sunday route. So we're, we've got our three specific areas of interest. We've got the Enzo region uh, just here. And then we've got the Northern Pacific Ocean up there. Uh, North Atlantic Ocean is around here. That's how the oceans were looking uh, when we did last week's Sunday roundup. Uh, this is how the oceans are looking this week. So uh, dealing with the Enso region, first of all, very little change in the Enso region. We still have this weak signature of uh, El Nino still hanging on, uh, hanging around. It's not quite gone back to uh, Enso Neutral yet, um, but it's very close to going back to Enso Neutral. So, sort of, we're in the death throes of, uh, of what was a very weak El Nino uh, event anyway, and uh, it's kind of like on the border somewhere between um, Enso Neutral on the warm side and uh, and um, weak El Nino. So uh, it's about finished, I think, this El Nino event, unless it starts uh, re-strengthening, of course, as we go into the summer. Now, in the Northern Pacific, this is how things were looking last week, and this is how things are looking this week. So in the Northern Pacific, it may be cooling down a little bit in this sort of area. Uh, so it's turned a little bit colder up there, but in the far north of the Pacific Ocean and northeast, it's still relatively uh, warm with those sea surface temperature anomalies. And then in the Atlantic, uh, that's how things looked uh, last week. This is how things are looking this week. You'll notice that area of colder and average sea surface temperature anomalies tending to become more focused towards Newfoundland, but they do still go up towards Greenland uh, to some degree. But definitely these colder than average sea surface temperature anomalies are becoming sort of confined to this area. Also, it looks like it's warming up in the tropical Atlantic. We talked about this, I think, last week. So, sea surface temperature anomalies do appear to be lifting up through the tropical uh, Atlantic to some degree. That's interesting because if that carries on, then uh, that could uh, start off the um, hurricane season, the tropical storm hurricane season for the Atlantic this summer and autumn. On quite an active note, if those uh, sea surface temperature anomalies continue to increase through the tropical Atlantic. So keep a close eye on that. Uh, it does look relatively warm there through the tropical Atlantic at the moment. I think it has got warmer over the past few weeks. So be keeping a close eye on that as we go into summer. That could be quite important for this hurricane season. Uh, this is how the Summer Oscillation Index is looking. This is from uh, Queensland Government, part of the Bureau of Meteorology. Of course, we did the ENSO update on uh, Friday. So um, check out the ENSO update if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, so SOI is currently going through a more negative phase uh, once again. Remember, it's just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric uh, setup. It's measuring the air pressures between Darwin in Australia and Tahiti in the Southern Ocean. Uh, so when the SOI is in its negative phase, then the atmospheric setup will be reflecting an El Nino. When the SY is positive, the atmospheric the atmospheric setup will be reflecting La Nina. So uh, we're actually in, going into more of a negative phase again over the past few days. We see that the 23rd of May goes down to minus 19.44, the 24th of May going down to minus 22.35. Uh, 25th of May going down to minus 12.54. I mean, today, 26th May, they're ahead of us, of course, in uh, Australia. So um, 26th has already been and gone down there. Uh, so that's down to minus 19.2. Those are provisional. They can be corrected a little bit. They don't tend to change a great deal from um, the provisional number. So uh, we are going through a more negative phase. Tells us that the atmosphere is rather reflective of the El Nino uh, at the moment. That's possibly why we sort of remain at that border between Enso Neutral and Weak El Nino rather than going definitively back to Enso Neutral. Possibly because the atmosphere setup is still quite reflective uh, of El Nino, although only a few days before that we see the atmospheric setup was quite reflective of La Nina. So, for example, on the 18th of May we're at plus 10, and on the uh, 17th of May we're at plus 14. Those numbers are uh, positive, um, and they're reflective of a more uh, sort of La Nina type setup. So it is swinging a little bit between El Nino and La Nina in terms of the atmospheric setup. But perhaps primarily, it's still reflective of uh, El Nino. 
This is how the articulation observed and forecast chart is uh, stacking up. So again, this is just an index that's measuring the atmospheric state. This time, it's looking at the uh, at the North Pole. So when the Arctic Oscillation is positive, then you're going to have low pressure up over the pole. When the Arctic Oscillation is negative, then uh, you're going to have high pressure blocking uh, around the pole. So, uh, black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. Red lines are yeah, where the GFS ensembles forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. From February to March, we was in a prolonged sort of positive phase of the AO, but around the start of April, we went negative, and we've generally stayed negative with the Arctic Oscillation since then. So, where we are right now is actually around um, neutral, but uh, we see that the GFS ensembles are forecasting uh, the uh, the Arctic Oscillation should trend negative again as we go into the early part of June. That's 1st of June, just there, of course. So um, definitely on the negative side uh, with the Arctic Oscillation at the moment. We are in sort of uh, a quite a prolonged phase of negativity of the AO. That's the reason we've come away with a relatively cool but also quite dry uh, May. It's because we had high pressure up over the um, Greenland part of the uh, North Pole. It's pushed cool air down into uh, into us. But at the same time, uh, it's also blocked off the Atlantic. So uh, we've had a relatively uh, relatively cool and dry May, which is quite an unusual combination, actually. It looks like we're going to keep the uh, blocking signal going into the start of June anyway, but uh, I reckon temperatures could well be warming up in the uh, start of June too. North Atlantic Oscillation uh, looks like that. So again, the black line shows where we've been with the NAO, the red lines at the end where GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to go. Both the indexes are in uh, a prolonged negative state. So both indexes went negative in early April. Uh, did go a bit positive there with the, uh, with the NAO, but only very briefly and then back to uh, negativity again. Where we are now is just there, so still negative with the uh, NEO and the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NEO to stay generally negative through into the first or even second week of uh, June. So, um, again, it's measuring the atmospheric uh, setup in the North Atlantic this time when um, the uh, NAO is positive, you're going to have low pressure around Iceland and you'll have high pressure through the Azores. You'll, in the winter, you'll strengthen uh, the westerly flow. This time of year, that can actually lead to the Azores high ridging in and bring quite a lot of dry and warm weather. Conversely, when the NAO is negative, then you're going to have high pressure up towards Iceland and Greenland and you have low pressure through the Azores. So that's the kind of pattern that we've been seeing through this May. Again, it's one of the reasons that we've, we've tended to have quite a coolish May, um, but uh, also quite a dry month. So, it looks like we're going to keep both the indexes negative into the early part of June. Summer 2019 going to start off with a negative AO and NAO type pattern. But, at the same time, temperatures look like they're going to be warming up quite a lot through early June. So, uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. So, we're quite warm at the moment. Fairly muggy and humid out there. But, uh, things will be cooling down through the rest of the uh, bank holiday weekend. It's going to get cooler, but it will still be showery. As we go into the uh, sort of second half of next week and into next weekend, the Temperatures quite clearly are lifting up. Upper air temperatures and surface temperatures will be lifting up, getting warmer. Uh, I think this could easily lift temperatures into the mid 20s Celsius next weekend, maybe higher than that. So it could be knocking on the door of 80 Fahrenheit, our first real push of warmth of the summer occurring in the first weekend of the summer. And then beyond that, it looks like we're keeping those uh, upper air temperatures quite warm, really. It's certainly above average through into the second week of June. That's that period uh, just there. So a definite um, warming trend within the GFS ensembles at the moment. Precipitation-wise, showery uh, for the rest of May. So um, around the 1st of June, the end of this coming week, it turns drier. And then we're going to a drier spell through the first week of June, maybe be just signs of, uh, of it turning a little bit more unsettled into that second week of June. But of course, that's a very extended range, uh, so it's in the unreliable time frame of the GFS model and its ensembles. Uh, it does look as though the first, uh, the first week of June is going to be bringing a lot of dry and uh, warm weather with it, if the forecast is right. 
Temperature anomalies from the 26th of May through to the 3rd of June. For England and Wales, a little bit above average. For Scotland, a little bit below average. I'd expect to see these trending warmer over the uh, next few days. Precipitation anomalies. So for the south, it's close to average. Maybe a bit drier than average down from the far southwest. And a bit wetter than average through uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Northern England from the 26th of May to the 3rd of June. In America, I haven't looked at these charts in a while. It's quite warm over on the eastern side of America and it's pretty cool out in the west. So uh, warm in the east, cool in the west. Precipitation wise, the southeastern corner of the states looking quite dry, uh, but otherwise fairly unsettled and interestingly very wet over towards the Pacific um, side of the states. So uh, it looks like California there is uh, pretty uh, wet, for example. So uh, this is how the GFS uh, uh, Midnight Run is uh, forecasting things for Wednesday back in the UK. And uh, quite cool and showery, really, up to the middle part of the week. Although we are trying to build in a ridge from the uh, Azores High. So uh, it's possible that by midweek things will be turning drier in the west. But in the east, probably still fairly uh, showery. On Thursday, an area of low pressure could bring wet weather, particularly to northern parts of the country. But after that, the high pressure increasingly building up from the southwest. Here comes that ridge building up from the south. So by the time we get into next weekend, this is Sunday, 2nd of June, high pressure has taken over the pattern away from northwest Scotland. Anyway, it will be mainly dry, very warm, temperatures are uh, at least into mid 20s Celsius, possibly higher than that, with plenty of sunshine. So we could be on course for a barbecue weekend uh, next weekend. Uh, heading into the following week, well, uh, we keep this high pressure going really. Uh, so uh, we're moving up towards day 10, which is Wednesday, the 5th of June. We've got high pressure to our east, low pressure out to west, and we're pulling up a southerly wind. So that could actually turn quite hot, would you believe? That could lift temperatures maybe to 30 degrees uh, there. So a really Real push of heat through the first weekend of uh, through the first week, I should say, of June. Uh, we're going into extended range uh, now, and overall, we're still keeping high pressure inf influences very close to us. So, it looks like it remains on this particular GFS run anyway. Looks like it remains pretty dry and potentially very warm, going right the way through to the second week of June. There may be an interruption of thundery sh uh, showers and some sort of temporary breakdown, but overall, the signal is very much towards high pressure through the first half of June on uh, on this GFS operational run. The GFS parallel run looks like that. So again, rather showery and a little bit cool through the middle part of the week. Fairly unsettled uh, towards the end of the week, really. But by next weekend, here comes that high pressure building up from the south-southwest, turning increasingly dry and potentially very warm next weekend. And then we keep these dry and very warm conditions going up towards day 10, which is Wednesday the 5th of June. We're under the area of high pressure, so it'll remain uh, very warm. Temperatures at least into mid to possibly upper 20s Celsius with that. And also very dry conditions too. And in the more extended range, well, again, high pressure remains in control with this uh, GFS parallel run going into the second week of June. So no changes at all about high pressure rooted almost over top of the country. This could be a really warm and very dry uh, first half to June. Dare I say it, maybe even hints of a heat wave, but uh, we shall see. It's very early days to be talking in those terms, but certainly very warm and dry conditions uh, indicated by both the GFS operational and parallel runs today uh, for the first half of June. ECMWF is looking like this. So uh, again, it's rather sort of cool and showery midweek and still quite unsettled to the end of the week, really. But then here comes a push of high pressure from the south as we go into next weekend turning mainly dry, fine and warm. Uh, into, in towards day 10, so through this first week of June, just turns a bit more unsettled with the ECM. It starts to move this trough in from off the Atlantic, this low pressure. And that could be a bit thundery, actually. So there's Monday the 3rd, looking mainly dry and potentially very warm, certainly down in the south. Then low pressure starts to come in from the Atlantic on Tuesday the 4th. 
And by Wednesday the 5th, we actually have low pressure over the country. It's bringing in cool rare, but it is, um, before that low pressure comes in, it is quite warm. So that could be a bit thundery there. Maybe hints of, uh, of our first sort of plume, followed by fungi breakdown, perhaps, um, from around the 3rd through to the 5th of June. Quite different to what the GFS uh, output is showing, though. Uh, this our CFS is looking for the next uh, four weeks. So uh, uh, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly periods. The first week period takes us from the 26th of May to the 1st of June. The uh, coming week with below average heights to our east and northeast, above average heights to the southwest and also to the north, northern blocking around Greenland. So rather cool and showery conditions over the next uh, few days. But then we go through to week two. This is the 2nd to the 8th of June with above average heights building up from the southwest. Below average heights being pushed back up towards Greenland and Iceland along with the jet stream turning drier and warmer there from the 2nd to the 8th of June. Then high pressure well and truly in control for week three. This is the 9th to the 15th of June, above average heights sitting over to the east of us. That would pull in uh, warm, very warm, maybe even quite hot, southerly to southeasterly winds. Um, possibly risk of thunder in western and southern parts of the country, but main thing about it is that temperatures will be lifting up a lot. And then we go through to week four which is the 16th to the 22nd of June, above average heights again to our east, but also going to our north uh, as well. So it remains a pretty dry picture, really, even going into the second half of June. The only difference is a slight... Uh, a slight change in the position of the high pressure of the ridge that could possibly start to pull in some cool air from the northeast, maybe. But the main thing uh, is that a CFS, along with the GFS, is signalling that high pressure is going to be quite dominant in this June and could give us a lot of dry and uh, warm weather. And this is how uh, June is shaping up with the CFS uh, monthly forecast. This is the, uh, this is the 700 millibar height anomaly for June itself. And again, it's showing high pressure to be both to the north and the east of us. Uh, so that would bring in potentially warm or very warm sort of east or southeasterly uh, winds. The temperature anomaly for June is being forecast to be warmer than average, it's going for a warmer than average month. Precipitation anomalies are very weak as they usually are. You expect a relatively dry month and any precipitation that occurs probably from sort of thundery outbreaks. So um, quite uh, regional uh, with uh, with um, precipitation in June if this signal was to come off. It's certainly not indicated much in the way of Atlantic westerlies, so um, any precipitation that does occur probably in the form of uh, showers or thunderstorms, meaning that uh, very um, sort of local differences. Some areas will probably come away with a very dry June with that. Other areas might have quite a wettish month if they get two or three uh, really torrential thunderstorms, that kind of uh, month anyway. Certainly not much sign of an Atlantic-driven month bringing um, regular rain bands from off the Atlantic. That's the signals anyway. Obviously, with these long-range models, uh, they're very much prone to chopping and changing. So uh, that, of course, is really unreliable. But it does look as though there is a trend here for the first half of June anyway to be relatively high pressure dominated and potentially very warm and dry at times. Finally, if you're enjoying the uh, videos at the moment, please can you consider becoming a patron? So we've got 61 patrons to so this. Thanks so much to our patrons and uh, hello to all of you. Hope you're enjoying the uh, videos at the moment. If you'd like to become a patron, the Gaz Office, all you need to do is come to the Gaz Office uh, Patreon page, sign up for a Patreon account, and then you can send an ongoing monthly donation from anything from $1 a month upwards to Gaz Office. You will pull in with all of the other patrons, and by doing that, you do become a patron for Gaz Office. You'll get a shout out in videos. We'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. As long as you want, but if you'd rather stay anonymous, that's absolutely fine. But uh, big thank you to all of our patrons. Alternatively, you can be a donor for Gaz Lovins via PayPal. So this is the Gaz Lovins PayPal page. This is really simple. Just sign into your PayPal account on this page and uh, then you can give a one-off donation to Gaz Lovins. You're helping us to pay for our content. You're helping to keep websites Gaz 
gabsweatherfeeds.com online. And uh, just a big thank you to all the patrons and all those. Whether you do it through Patreon or PayPal, you're going to get a mention in the videos. So we'll say thank you very much uh, for doing that. Uh, and that's it. So big thank you to all of our patrons and all of our donors. Right, so that's it then for the Sunday Roundup for this week. Don't forget to check out uh, the Summer Forecast. It's a pretty interesting watch. So uh, that video is here on the homepage at Gaza. It's at the moment, it will be placed on the Summer Forecast page this evening with a written forecast to go with it. So you'll be able to watch that on demand whenever you want and also uh, have a read of the uh, written forecast uh, for the summer of 2019. We're going to have a little sneak peek uh, for the autumn coming up in uh, a couple of hours. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but uh, 25 minutes, that's it for Gazzo's Sunday Roundup. So thanks for watching.